Welcome to Meet the Candidates. I'm Keith Thibault. As a public service, Fall River Community Television has invited the candidates running in this year's Fall River election the opportunity to use up to five minutes of airtime to speak directly to you, the voters of Fall River. What you are about to see are the candidates running for mayor, school committee, and city council in the November 8th city election. The order the candidates appear is the same order they will appear on the official Fall River ballot. All candidates were invited to attend the tapings. Those who chose not to attend will have their name displayed before a blank screen. So let's meet the candidates running in the November 8th city election. Hello, I'm Mayor Will Flanagan. Two years ago, we won this campaign because our opponents underestimated our great network of supporters and the impact of our grassroots campaign. They underestimated all the voters of Fall River and the hard work you could do to help bring a new era of leadership to our city. Well, I don't think they will ever underestimate you again. You are a force to be reckoned with, and I am honored and proud that you are in my corner. Whether you're an old friend or a new voter, you know what I stand for. I grew up here. I went to Fall River Public Schools. I worked my way through high school, college, and law school. I made Fall River my home. Like all of you, I have worked hard to make the best life I possibly can for me and my family. As your mayor, I have worked to create a better, stronger Fall River for future generations. I ran for mayor in 2009 because I wanted to make this stronger Fall River a reality. And along the way, I met some incredible people. All of us wanted stronger schools, safer streets, and a more responsive government. We wanted more jobs and new opportunities. We wanted a more secure economic future and one for our children. We came together and campaigned for change, and we won. Since I took office, my administration has laid the groundwork needed for that change. We have been working to grow jobs. We stabilized our city's bond rating to make it more attractive for long-term investment. We finalized the long-awaited agreement with UMass Dartmouth to create a Fall River Biopark and bring as many as 8,000 jobs to our city. We fought to secure state and federal funding for South Coast Rail. We introduced and passed a waterfront rezoning plan that will streamline investment and development along the Taunton River and Mount Hope Bay. We partnered with Bristol Community College and UMass Dartmouth to expand workforce training programs. And we've been working with state and federal leaders to identify new strategies for job creation. We have been working to improve our schools. We've hired teachers and completed a district education improvement plan that emphasizes college and career readiness. We lowered the high school dropout rate and raised the graduation rate. We doubled the number of Durfee High School students in advanced placement courses and tripled the number of qualifying AP test scores. We have fought to improve public safety and our quality of life. We balanced two city budgets during difficult economic times without laying off teachers, firefighters, or police officers. We launched a $3 million street repaving program, restriping our roads and repainting our crosswalks to make our roads safer for citizens. We fought hard to hire more police officers to increase walking beats in our neighborhoods, and as a community, we defeated LNG once and for all. Over these past 18 months, we have taken great strides towards a better economic future. Now we have to finish what we started. I ran for mayor in 2009 because I believed in the potential of our city, but I won in 2009 because I had the support of you. Now I need your support again. I'm Mayor Will Flanagan, and I'm respectfully asking for your vote on November 8th. Thank you, and God bless. Over the past two years, we have seen Fall River's unemployment climb to the highest in the state. We have seen crime increase while the number of police officers has been cut again. Our public school system is one of only two in Massachusetts threatened with state takeover. There is no good reason why other communities should succeed while we continue to fall further behind. My education, public service, and my personal and professional life experiences have taught me much. I've learned that leaders must be good listeners 
in order to take full advantage of the knowledge and experience around them. No one person has all the answers, and elected officials are no exception. As mayor, I will be the leader to bring the city council, school committee, legislative leaders, and government employees together to confront our city's problems head on. Our goals are simple. Reduce unemployment by changing job creation and protection strategies that don't work currently. Make our neighborhoods safe and clean with more police officers and DPW workers. Make government affordable by reducing wasteful spending for highly paid lawyers, administrators, and indirect services. Improve education and literacy by moving money into direct services for students. And reduce the economic drain caused by excessive, transient, subsidized housing. Creating new jobs and protecting the jobs we have must be our number one priority. It's time to hold the Fall River Office of Economic Development accountable. They will have goals and they will be expected to meet those goals or face consequences. Once I am elected mayor, we will work with our existing businesses and create a mayor's ambassador team to attract new companies to Fall River. We will start a new business outreach program to make sure that we meet the needs of our existing businesses. We recently read about an industrial park business that had to threaten to leave Fall River just to get someone to pay attention to their needs. We can no longer take our existing businesses for granted. Every job we have is worth keeping. We need to make our city safe and clean. Businesses and residents do not want to locate in high crime communities. Fall River has the fourth highest crime rate in the state, and yet the mayor recently cut nine positions from the police department budget. Folks, this is not how to fight crime in Fall River. I recently had opportunity to ask the police chief what we can do to reduce crime in our city. He responded, give our police department the manpower it needs, and we will take back the streets of Fall River for the good people who live here. Ladies and gentlemen, this must be our goal. Fall River is going through some very difficult times, but we can make a difference. I've learned in my life that when determination remains strong, things can change. Dreams that may seem unrealistic to some can come true with a steady, unwavering vision and an inspiring leader who people can believe in. I am running for mayor because I believe in you and I believe in me. And I know that once we join forces, no one will be able to stop us from making Fall River the great community that you and I know it can and will be. I ask for your vote on Tuesday, November 8th. Let's get Fall River working again. Hello, my name is Joseph Martins and I am seeking your vote for re-election to the Fall River School Committee. I will soon be completing my second term in office. My qualifications for your re-election vote include the experience gained as a current member of the school committee, coupled with 39 years as a teacher, school administrator, and ultimately the superintendent director of the Greater Fall River Vocational School District. Progress has been made, but more needs to be accomplished. I want Fall River Public Schools to provide programs where all students graduate with marketable skills so they can obtain employment that will provide for their independence and are prepared to enter college if they so choose. Let me highlight areas that I want to continue working on. MCAS test scores. I have analyzed the District 2011 MCAS scores and I have analyzed the placement data of students graduating or otherwise leaving Jeffy High School. While some progress has been made at individual schools, the overall district results rather stagnant. I believe MCAS scores will improve by achieving target performance through effective teaching and learning. I will continue to support effective teaching and learning by advocating for appropriate classroom staffing at all grade levels and by insisting teachers have the resources needed to effectively teach along with the supplies and materials for students to effectively learn. 
I want to continue working on improving the district MCAS results as a measure of all students receiving high quality education. Student graduation and dropout rate. Students start thinking about dropping out of school during their middle school years primarily because they are bored and do not see the relevance of what they are learning to what they want to do upon graduating from high school. It is understandable at their age that students do not know what they want to become as young adults. If boredom and lack of relevance as perceived by the students carry forward to their high school years, then dropping out of school becomes a reality. I will continue proposing that middle schools incorporate career awareness where students have guest speaker presentations from a variety of careers. With career awareness programs during the critical middle school years, students will understand the value and relevance of math, science, English language arts, and social studies as application of how these subjects will help them reach their post-graduation dreams. Student dropout rate will decrease. Jeffy has implemented a Career Pathways program. Career Pathways is a version of my long sought after Career Academy program. Career Pathways will be successful if required progressive core courses are included and students design their own high school curricula based on the students' interest of what they want to do following graduation. I will closely monitor the Career Pathway program to ensure students will have the basic skills to acquire an entry-level job within his or her career of interest and be prepared to enter college or other post-secondary institution. School budget. I have been and will continue to be a constant voice and vote for financial accountability. I shall continue to diligently monitor the school department budget to require transparency and ensure money is well spent for the education of all students. Parent and community involvement. I believe in open schools where parents are involved in the education of their children. Parents must know what their children are learning and have multiple opportunities to become involved. Parental support or objection must be honored, especially in health education when sexually explicit instruction is to take place. I believe sex education is needed, but it must be great appropriate and complete intent of pregnancy prevention to include an abstinence program and responsible choices. I highly support parental rights to exempt their children from certain instruction on grounds of moral objection. I believe in community involvement where community input is requested and seriously considered when major decisions are being contemplated. I thank you and I thank the Fall River Community Television for the opportunity to speak directly to you. I respectfully ask for your vote on November 8th. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact me at joemartins.schoolcommittee at comcast.net or call my campaign office at 508-617-8478. Hi, I'm Rick Pavo. I'm a candidate for re-election to the Fall River School Committee. Let me first off start by thanking the Fall River Community Television for allowing me to come into your homes and businesses today. Two years ago, you gave me the opportunity to serve on the school committee. And that time, I had promised that I would work very hard on your behalf in bringing in a balanced budget as well as increased student performance. As I speak to you today, I'm happy to report that over the last two years, we have had a balanced budget. In fact, this year's budget came in with a $612,000 surplus, which we have applied to the 2012 school budget year. I was also very instrumental and tedious in my approach to have a business manager appointed to a position that would over control and overlook the budget on a daily basis. We have hired a gentleman to do that and subsequently our financial house is in order. Second uh, time I had spoken to you, I'd asked for your, your support and how we increase the performance of our students. This year, our MCAS shows that we have improved. 
not to a level that I am satisfied with, because I believe we are unable to sustain the successes we have reached in the past. To give you an example, our yearly annual increase uh, for last year was in the area of mathematics. Our AYP this year was in the area of math language arts. We've lost our position in math and increased our position in language arts. We need to do more work to be sure that we increase both of those areas so the school districts and the schools reach their annual yearly progress. It hasn't been an easy job. It's been a job that has taken much time on behalf of the entire school committee. I am chairman of the subcommittee on policy. And over the last two years, as dictated by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, we develop a policy manual. I was very instrumental in getting that instrument up on the table and approved. That's the instrument that's going to guide and direct the school system in years to come. Along with that mandate from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education was to provide the school committee members with a handbook. I'm happy to tell you that we were able to succeed in that area as well. That handbook was delivered and approved to the school committee last month. Again, that will be a guide for all school committee me members, either present or future, to refer to and show how they can guide themselves during a committee meeting and the areas that they will re be responsible for. I am asking you once again to look at me as a viable candidate for re-election to the school committee. I believe of my experience as a formal educator of 38 years, starting as an elementary school teacher, working my way up to the ranks of superintendent. I believe I can bring a unique and prosperous vision to the school committee. I once again humbly request your support for the, my re-election to the school committee on November the 8th, and I thank you very much for this opportunity to speak with you today. Hi, I'm Gabe Andrade, and I am a candidate for school committee. While the bad economy has battered Fall River, the seeds for the city's rise and future growth can be found all around us, in our neighborhoods, where neighborhood groups provide for local leadership and renewal. On the waterfront, where we see the beginnings of development, downtown, where Restaurant Row is finally emerging at the Biopark with the promise of future jobs, with the Route 79 project and its potential for future development. A brighter future no longer seems like wishful thinking or empty promises. It's actually beginning to seem real. So why am I mentioning this? I am, after all, a candidate for school committee and not for the city council. The answer is, that all of these improvements are closely linked to the improvement of our public schools, which is crucial to help drive this development. It is an educated workforce which will determine how quickly the biopark is populated and how many of those jobs go to locals. It is an educated populace which will determine whether our cultural scene thrives. It is educated youth who will drive down the crime rate. I feel I am qualified by my experience of 30 plus years in the public schools and, a, and as a 12 year member of the Diamond School Committee to help lead our school system now and into the future. My priorities if elected are decreasing class size, particularly at the elementary level, improving career education at all levels to motivate students and to better prepare them for jobs, increasing partnerships with area businesses and nonprofits to improve services for youth and families. I humbly ask for your support on November 8th. Thank you and good day. Hello, my name is Paul Hart, candidate for the Fall River School Committee. My campaign began in February of this year. We have been working hard getting our message out and talking to parents, grandparents, as well as students and listening to all of their concerns. There are many good things happening in our school district, and we need to continue those positive results. 
However, we are also a school district with serious concerns that need our immediate attention and resolution. When my campaign started back in February, I was surprised that the subcommittee meetings for the school committee were not televised. I made a promise to my con constituents that I would get those meetings televised. I did, and I accomplished this by working together with the administration to get it done. Our campaign is also working on having these meetings take place throughout the neighborhoods of Fall River and not in the administration building in a room the size of your living room. By doing this, it will be more convenient for all citizens to attend those meetings and not during the day when we are all at work. To all citizens of Fall River, I am in this for the long haul and I won't let you down. My five-year-old son started kindergarten this year and like you, I want what's best for my son. It makes a world of difference when parents are involved and in taking part in their child's education. When this happens, we all win. Let's begin the journey of our children's education together. I respectfully ask for your vote to the Fall River School Committee on November 8th. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support, and God bless. Thank you. To the citizens of Fall River, for those of you that I have not met or who do not know me, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Carla Spideller, and I am a candidate for the Fall River School Committee in the upcoming election. I am a lifelong resident of the city of Fall River and graduated from BMC Durfee High. I graduated from Diamond Regional Vocational School as an LPN. Working evenings and weekends, I raised a family and attended Bristol Community College graduating from the nursing program to become a registered nurse. I continued to attend school evenings to further my education and obtained a bachelor's degree in business administration from Roger Williams University. In 1998, I received a master's degree in business and administration from Suffolk University in Boston. To assist me with the responsibilities of my employment, I became certified in paralegal studies as well as in forensic nursing. During this period, I began teaching as an adjunct professor evenings in the business division at Bristol Community College and have continued to do so for over 27 years. At this time, I am working towards obtaining a PhD in humanities from Salve Regina University. As my academic achievements grew, so did my career in the business area of healthcare, where I became part of the senior management team at several major companies, such as Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mass, Care Advantage Incorporated, and United Healthcare. My expertise being program development and implementation was focused on increasing the revenue for these organizations. During this time, I gained extensive knowledge and training in budget development and management, as well as in the other aspects of management responsibilities. Other parts of my role as a senior management member of the team was to ensure that all departments and programs had adequate and appropriate policies and procedures to ensure quality standards were met. This meant that the organization and team operated proactively to prevent issues and problems from arising and not just reactively to issues after they occurred. It is this concept of working proactively rather than reactively that I would like to see in the educational system in Fall River. Current areas of concern settle on providing our students and educators with a comprehensive and conducive environment where students learn without distraction and educators feel appreciated. If there is difficulty with consistent and fair application of a policy, the policy is not enforceable for any party, thus making a situation even more difficult to resolve. Budgetary items and the lack of explanation of the line items within the budget are a concern as costs increase for many services provided. Could services be brought in-house or outsourced to lower costs, provide quality services, and possibly increase the quality of life for the students involved. 
It is important that the learning material provided in the classroom, as well as the standard of ethics expected, are supported by other environments, such as home and work as well. Where does a parent who personally is unable to assist a child they see struggling go for help? Where should they go to find this assist assistance, thus supporting the child in the alternative environments before the child becomes too frustrated and either fails or drops out of school? The city's most valuable asset is its children. They are your son and daughter, your grandchild, your niece or nephew, and they deserve the education necessary to prepare them for the future. They are the ones who will be making the decisions regarding this city's future, the state's future, our country's future, and most of all, our future, based on how much they know and understand. We owe them this education. Thank you for allowing me to introduce myself to you at this time and to provide you with some of the thoughts that I carry on the importance of a basic education. It is not just the responsibility of the school committee, it is your responsibility as a voter to ensure that our children are given the education they need today and tomorrow as well. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jamie Terrell and I'm a candidate for Fall River School Committee. I'm a lifelong resident of Fall River. I am married to the former Diana Belmore and we are the parents of three children. Nicole, age 25, a graduate of Johnson & Wales University. Daniel, age 22, and Andrew, age 18, both students at UMass Dartmouth. I seek the Office of School Committee for a variety of reasons. I firmly believe that education is the foundation and the underpinning of the community. The quality of education affects everything from social issues to crime to economic development. If the city of Fall River hopes to attract industries that provide good paying jobs, then, then we must be able to provide an educated workforce to fill those positions. Everyone who is a resident of the city of Fall River has a vested interest in the success of the public school system. Currently, the Fall River school system is operating under a state mandated recovery plan. It is imperative that progress be made with respect to benchmarks and goals laid out in this plan. In the area of fiscal management, the establishment of a school department budget is often done at the last minute with little, limited time for study and debate by the school committee. I would propose the establishment of policies that will build a budget based upon a zero-based approach in every school building. There would be the establishment of a series of deadlines which would require central administration to present to the school committee a preliminary budget by a predetermined date that would give the committee ample time for study and debate. When building a budget, the day-to-day -day needs of classroom instruction must be met before all areas are addressed. Our focus must be on providing the teachers and paraprofessionals in the classroom with the tools they need to educate our students. We must use every means necessary to control the problem of ever-expanding class sizes, which detract from the learning process and shortchange the students of the system. The problem with the school department budget not, lies not with bloated areas of waste, but in decisions made as to where and how available financial resources are used. One area of concern is the growth of middle management positions over the past several years. The allocation of funds should be first and foremost in those areas which provide direct student services. Few of these middle management positions have direct student contact and carry salaries well beyond what is paid to even the most experienced classroom teachers. The four of the public schools face the challenge of servicing a student population with many wide and varying needs. In meeting these needs, it is important that funding be used to provide teachers and paraprofessionals who can assist students who very often struggle to learn for a number of reasons. I'd also like to address the area of collective bargaining. When the school year began in September, once again, the members of the Four of Educators Association returned to school without a contract. The superintendent has stated on several occasions that the absence of a contract has a negative effect on teacher morale and is a distraction to the learning process. I would like to explore the possibility of replacing traditional collective bargaining methods with the process of interest-based or collaborative bargaining. In the collaborative bargaining process, both members of the FREA and the school committee, after a brief training program in the collaborative process, will be at the table face-to-face -face with a facilitator. This process was used in the past and resulted in the re resolution of contract negotiations in a timely manner. With respect to the school committee itself, although education reform changed the role of school committees substantially, especially in matters of personnel, it did not change the power of the school committee to establish policies under which a school system operates. I believe in that many ways that power has fallen into disuse. For example, while a school committee is no longer involved in hiring other than the superintendent of schools, it can establish policies that affect the qualifications of such positions as building principals. 
Fall River has gone from a, a city of neighborhood schools to one with large educational complexes. There are certification requirements for these positions, but they do not address the issue of large building man management. This has been a problem on at least two occasions. School committee policies can, can include demonstrated building management skills as a part of the initial job qualifications. It is time that the role of, roles of the school committee and central administration are clearly defined. The school committee has the responsibility to establish policies under which our public schools are operated. It is the responsibility of the superintendent and her leadership team to see that our schools are run on a daily basis within the framework of those policies. There is a greater need for direct communication between the school committee and those who provide classroom instruction on a daily basis. While the school committee cannot and should not involve itself in the day-to-day -day operation of the public schools, it can serve as an advocate in bringing to the attention of the school department central administration the concerns of students, parents, teachers, and the citizens of the community. I would like to thank Florida Cable Television for the opportunity to address you, and I would respe respectfully ask for your vote on November the 8th. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Attorney Bradford Kilby, and I am once again standing before you requesting that on November 8th, you cast a vote so I can continue my work as one of your Fall River City Councilors. A little bit about my background. I'm a lifelong resident of Fall River. I reside at 1846 Robeson Street with my wife Monique and my three children. Thomas, who recently graduated from Stonehill College. My daughter Elizabeth, who attends Diamond as a junior. And my son Brad, uh, who is a freshman at Durfee High School. My wife Monique and I are very, very proud of our children and have tried to uh, instill in them the work ethic that we both believe in. Professionally, I own and operate a law practice here in the, city, in the city of Fall River um, and been doing so for the past 15 years. Prior to that, I was a teacher at BMC Durfee High School uh, working with at-risk students. Um, and it's something that I have fond memories of uh, many of the students that I did uh, hopefully influence in a positive way. Uh, educationally, I attended uh, BMC Durfee High School, graduating in 1983. Bridgewater State College, where I received my teaching license, graduating in 1987. And then attended law school, New England School of Law in Boston, working by day as a teacher, uh, going up to Boston three or four times a week at night, and four years later uh, uh, started uh, my law practice that continues today. My elective office experience, I was a member of the Fall River City, uh, excuse me, Fall River School Committee uh, for eight years and was very, very proud of the votes that I took at that time and the positions taken. And may I say, throughout all the years that I've been an elected official, if you were to ask my colleagues at the time or elected officials who are still on, I'm sure they would say that Attorney Brad Kilby is someone who is fair, direct, honest, and who is willing to take a stand when needed but is also willing to be part of a team when the vote is appropriate. So I was a member of the Fall River School Committee for eight years, very, very uh, proud of the votes that I took, the positions that I'd taken, whether it was entering into collaborative bargaining with our teaching, teachers union for the first time in Fall River's history, to the building of new schools uh, throughout the city of Fall River. And it's ironic when I drive down President Avenue and I see the Morton Middle School being demolished uh, and the new school, finally the new school that's going to be built on that site, that's going to serve our students and our teachers and our staff well for many, many years to come. Currently, I'm a member of the Fall River City Council. I've been uh, so for the last six years, and I'm chairman of public safety. Um, and I don't think you're going to find a counselor on the city council who has been more vocal in terms of public safety, uh, the rank and file of our police department, uh, the rank and file of our fire department, um, and someone who has always been an advocate for more staffing uh, for those departments. Educationally, I, as I said, I've always supported public education, and I pledge to you I will always bring a, spring, a strong voice to the City Council with regard to adequate educational funding for our school system. Just this year, when Chapter 70 money, that's educational money, was going to be used for other purposes, myself and a number of my colleagues very strongly uh, uh, demanded that the administration fully fund uh, our educational system and meet net school spending that is required by the state. Anything less than that would have been, I think, a big mistake on a part of 
any community. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, uh, I humbly stand before you. I'm asking for your vote on November 8th. Um, if you'd followed elective office and politics throughout the city of Fall River over the last decade, um, I'm sure you know my record, you know where I stand, uh, you, you're dealing with someone who prides himself on constituent service uh, and prides himself on uh, doing the right thing in order to improve the city of Fall River. So once again, on November 8th, please cast one of your nine votes for Attorney Brad Kilby for the Fall River City Council, and I promise I will not let you down. Hi, I'm Ray Mitchell. Two years ago, I came here before you, the voters of Fall River, asking for your support in my quest to represent you on the City Council. With your support, I was elected, and I feel that I have kept my promises to the voters of Fall River. One of the areas of concern was the need for change in the zoning for the development of our waterfront. As a newly elected councillor, I spoke with Jim Hartnett and the newly elected mayor about the need for improved zoning on our waterfront so that we could realize development. I am happy to say that through the efforts of many individuals, we were successful. We now have a new and improved zoning and currently have a developer who is renovating the old Quaker fabric mill on Duval Street. In the very near future, in this very building, Fall River will have a Jerry Remy's restaurant and other businesses will prosper. This could not have happened without that rezoning. I truly believe that this is the first of many projects that we will see on our waterfront. I have been a strong supporter of economic development in our community. When it came to my attention that the company located in our industrial park was leaving because of a lack of fiber optics in the area, I met with them to explore a, sol a solution to this problem. Working together and with a colleague, we were able to resolve this issue to everyone's satisfaction. A company that would have left this area is now prospering and expanding because of our efforts. We are currently working with the Industrial Park Tenant Association to bring fiber optics to the entire industrial park. At the present time, I am talking to a company that is looking to locate in the New England area. I am hoping to convince them to come to Fall River. Two years ago, I spoke of my concerns about public safety. It came to my attention that scam artists were working our neighborhoods trying to sell bogus home improvement contracts. I initiated a new ordinance in Fall River that requires door-to-door -door salesmen and their representatives to have a quarry check through the Fall River Police Department. Upon certification of a quarry, these individuals and representatives are issued a picture identification card. Now the citizens of Fall River know that only those who have such identification are legitimate business representatives. I designed and co-sponsored an anti-litter ordinance, which increased the littering fines from $100 $300. The increase $200 stays with the police department, hopefully to hire more police personnel. This program was also expanded to allow the state's DEP to set up cameras in areas that people are known to litter so that we can stop the litter that has so frequently been seen in our community. Education is another area of concern to all of us. If we are going to attract businesses into our community and if Fall River is going to grow and prosper, we need to have an educational system that makes our students competitive. At the present time, we are building a biopark to attract pharmaceutical companies to Fall River where our citizens can work. We need to improve our educational system to meet those demands. That is why I supported an increase in the educational budget. These are but a few of the initiatives that I have taken in the first two years as your city councilor. Because I am retired, I am a full-time city councilor and will continue to be. I not only have the passion to institute change, but the time to devote to Fall River. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been my honor to serve you as a city councilor, and I ask that you consider me when you vote November 8th. Please vote Ray Mitchell, your full-time city councilor. Thank you.
Hello, I'm Linda Pereira, and I am thankful for the trust you've instilled in me, allowing me to serve you as one of your city councilors. We are all facing challenging times, and my family is no different than yours. I advocated for the Biopark from the start to bring good paying jobs to Fall River. I advocated for all government meetings to be televised live because an informed citizen is essential to good government. I advocated for a residency requirement because I believe a Fall River job should first go to a qualified Fall River resident. Let's take care of our own. One of the greatest rights that we have is to cast a ballot. Thank you, each and every one of you who voted in the primary election, because every single vote matters. And of course, a special thanks to those who supported my campaign. I work hard from the heart for the betterment of our city. Thank you for noticing and responding with such enthusiasm. I hope to see you all out again on November the 8th, because together is the only way we can achieve a better Fall River. As always, feel free to contact me at 508-678-3506. I love nothing more than hearing from you, your input, comments, suggestions, and yes, your criticism, because all of that assists me in better representing you, because you are who I work for. Again, thank you, and please remember me on November the 8th, Linda Pereira. Hi, my name is Eric Poulin, candidate for Fall River City Council. As your newest city councilor, I am just completing my first two years on the council. And during that time, I fought to preserve funding for education, fought to improve zoning along our waterfront to attract business and industry and jobs, and have worked with the Fall River Industrial Park Association to improve access to high-speed internet and to address other issues in the industrial park. I've also worked with the Fall River Mill Owners, the Chamber of Commerce, and other groups seeking to make our city more business friendly because I strongly believe that economic development and jobs are crucial issues and must be addressed by anyone serving an elected office in the city of Fall River. With regard to public safety, I've worked closely with our police department, passing many initiatives that they've asked for in order to give them the tools that they need to do their very difficult jobs. The council passed a nuisance property ordinance and was able to work with the mayor to secure a commitment from the housing authority for additional funding to hire police officers. We also increased littering fines in our city from $100 to $300, with $200 of each fine going directly to the police department's budget. We are currently working on a new law that is designed to crack down on scrap metal and precious metal thefts in our city, and I will continue to work to assist public safety in our city, trying to identify funding for personnel and equipment through my work on a public safety focus group made up of the leaders of our neighborhood associations, the police chief, and our state legislators. As much work as I know that I've done during my first two years on the city council, I know that there is a lot more work left to do, but I need your support in order to have the opportunity to continue to work hard on your behalf. So on Tuesday, November 8th, I humbly and respectfully ask that you vote Eric Poulin for Forever City Council. Thank you. Hello, my name is Chris Bartley, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you myself and my campaign for City Council. Along with my wife, Lori, and our son, Braden, I am a lifelong resident of Forever and have been active in many community organizations throughout the city, such as the North End Neighborhood Association, the Coalition for Responsible Siting of LNG Facilities, as well as the St. Michael's Parish Soup Kitchen. I have been an active voice for, the, for positive influence within our community, and with your vote of confidence, I'm committed to restoring integrity to our City Council. Along with my campaign team, I have, de I have developed a strategy to identify many of the issues and challenges we face on a daily basis. A strategy that will offer solutions to our problems in the face of adversity in a such a poor economic climate. The message of our campaign is restored integrity, and I issue this open statement to our current elected officials. 
break down the political walls that have restricted us to minimal achievement, allow for the free flow of information between all government and quasi-governmental agencies, public and private, create and foster better working partnerships by eliminating politics from the situation, and let's put people first because that's restored integrity. We need individuals that are forward thinkers and have the leadership and foresight to plan ahead for the future. We need to bridge the gap between government and the everyday citizen, ensuring that government is working for them because that is restored integrity. We need to improve relationships and foster solid working partnerships within all divisions of government. That's restored integrity. Florida has sustained and continues, continues to face serious declines in unemployment and stagnant economic growth. We can begin to change that by continuing the work of rezoning our districts and eliminating the red tape that plagues our permitting process. Florida has traditionally struggled with becoming a business-friendly city, but we can make government more efficient by combining departments and creating a welcome center for businesses that they can receive all the information necessary on permitting, variances, tax structure, and locations. I believe our city needs to develop a more aggressive marketing strategy that pinpoints key targets and opportunities for growth that the floor of the Office of Economic Development should be held accountable for. There has been talk about developing the waterfront for years, but little talk about developing areas in the city that have huge business growth potential. Areas like downtown, Pleasant Street, Columbia Street, and Plymouth Avenue all have potential for increased business growth. These areas will benefit from establishing business improvement districts that are funded by the businesses within their particular boundaries. These business improvement districts work in conjunction with our local and state government to establish incentives to assist existing businesses and recruit new business. These business improvement districts will work to make these areas successful through marketing plans, capital improvements, and additional security. But most importantly, we need to expand public, public transportation and parking to support this influx of business to our city because right now we cannot support this type of growth that we need to employ our citizens. I will work strategically to provide a better quality of life for both my family and the citizens of Florida by aggressively and creatively addressing issues that impact economic development, public safety, and education. If substantial improvements are made in these areas, like becoming more business friendly, improving our infrastructure, and making education a priority, we will change the perception of Florida, which will ultimately lead to economic growth and jobs. It is also the responsibility of our elected officials to not tax and spend, but to save and increase revenue to properly fund staffing levels for our DPW, police, and fire departments. We can only do this by electing the right individuals, and I believe that I'm one of them, and that's why I'm running for city council. For more information on my campaign platform, please visit www.chrisbartley.com. I welcome your questions, comments, and input on issues and ideas that are important to you. If you are an individual that feels we can do better, then I look forward to earning your vote on November 8th and ask that you join us on Election Day to restore integrity to the floor of a city council. Thank you very much. I'm Bob Booten, candidate for city council, and I love Fall River. I need your vote to change the direction of the city council. Last election, we chose two new councilors, and I must say, they were excellent choices. Let's keep it up. I propose that each voter that wants real change here in Fall River study and vote for three new councilors. This would give a solid majority to the voices of reason. First, pick new people that have some experience helping the citizens of Fall River and have knowledge of how city government works. Two, long-term residency is important, and candidates must understand the fundamentals of good business practice. During my 12 years on the Water Board, I've had the pleasure of being involved in the establishment of the Bio Reserve, which allowed the city to acquire the 300 acres for the Bio Park. Due to the persistent efforts of the board, we now have a new Townsend Hill water tank that has increased the water quality and pressure in the south end, along with 42 miles of new water main. 
all during the term that I served. I've been in the real also I've been in the real estate business for 38 years. This is an area that the council needs lots of help. I've toured about a half dozen of the vacant schools. That was quite a few months ago. Nothing has been done to investigate the proper value for these properties. Have you watched the council real estate committee meetings? They're very sad. I was dumbfounded when one of our new councilors suggested that the city should at least consult with the local board of realtors to see if they could help establish values for the properties. What was the answer given to him? We don't have time for that. Let's stop shooting from the hip. Yes, many of you have seen this before, but the picture of my house burning on May 11, 1982. We should not depend on government grants to maintain our, po our police and fire departments at full strength. There is nothing wrong with augmenting our public safety staff with grants. But as you know, the federal government is slashing its budget. We must target a larger percentage of our city budget for public safety personnel. We can't cut police. The neighborhood associations are doing their best to help work with police, but we will always need people on the street. Fall River will not let the criminal element take control of our streets. May God bless and protect all the citizens of Fall River. Thank you, merci beaucoup, obrigado e gracias. As a lifelong resident of Fall River, I'm deeply concerned about our city and its people. Hello, I'm Dave Dennis and I'm running for city council. I've been active in the city for as long as I can remember in such organizations as the Fall River Park Advocates, Coalition for the Responsible Siting of LNG and Arts United. I spent several years working in the healthcare industry where I saw firsthand the need for people getting quality medical care. I'm a lawyer working with many clients who often just can't afford an attorney. There was a time in Fall River when you grew up in the neighborhood, went to school, graduated from high school, and got a pretty good job in one of the mills, and eventually started a family. Life was good and pretty simple. Unfortunately, for most of us, it's not that simple today. The priorities of this great city have to change, and change now, or we'll never be able to catch up. I've been working for the past several years on programs that I believe will restore Fall River to greatness. I've hosted visits from developers, investors, and officials from government agencies to see firsthand what Fall River has to offer. But returning Fall River, or any city for that matter, to greatness is no easy task. But I have specific programs in mind to achieve this goal. First, Fall River is going to have to decide what it wants to be and where it wants to go, then create a long-term strategic plan to get us there. We have never implemented a master plan and stuck to it long enough to see any real results. If we have no blueprint to guide us, how can we ever rebuild our city? Second, just as the city of Quincy has done with its 10-year, $1.5 billion investment plan, we too can revitalize our core urban center and take advantage of the national trend where people are returning to urban centers to live and work. Finally, I have long advocated for the idea that education equals economic development equals jobs equals revenue. This is a simple but true formula that simply means if we have an educated and skilled workforce, companies will locate here because they will have a pool of qualified employees to hire. This will create jobs attracting more middle class family to fill the jobs and who value education for their children. In turn, both will purchase local goods and services. This will increase our tax base, lessen our reliance on outside revenues. The increased revenues will be used to improve public safety, provide better municipal services like fixing our streets, maintain open spaces such as parks, bike paths, and the kinds of amenities 
that will make our city <clears throat> a better place to live and work. In turn, attracting more companies and families who will invest in our city. Finally, the bottom line in this year's race is simple. Who has the experience, the knowledge, and vision to get Fall River back to where it belongs? Not only as an all-American city, but a city we can be proud of and create a true quality of life for our children and grandchildren. I'm around. I'll be in your neighborhood, and I'm available to you. I'm promising you nothing other than one fact, and that is no other candidate will work as hard for you as me. I'm Dave Dennis, and I'm asking for your vote on Election Day, Tuesday, November 8th. Thank you. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeff Gregory. I'm running for city council. Hopefully you've heard my name before. I'd like to state that the most important thing in this election is that you have to get out and vote. The city's at a critical time period in its history, and we need people to vote. I have a master's degree. I worked for the city for 22 years. I'm now a retired police sergeant. During that time period, I was head of the Fall River Police Association. We had a financial crisis back in 2002 and 2003. Absolutely no services were cut to the citizens of the Fall River. We prioritized the cuts, we all worked together, and we got through it. Right now, our school system's floundering, the DPW is shorthanded, the fire department's positions are dangling, hanging on grant money, and the Fall River Police Department's down 60, 65 officers that should be protecting the city. Recently, the, police, the school department has given a raise to the superintendent of the schools. This was after the school employees were asked to take an 8% cut. The teachers have been without a contract for two years, and the school system's nearly been taken over by the state. I'm the only candidate or sitting city councilor that came out against this. It was absolutely wrong when it happened, and it's wrong now. I've been campaigning stating there's three basic needs for economic development in our city. We have to get back and build the foundation. We have to get the crime rate back down. We have to have our school department top notch, and we have to clean up our cities and streets. Ladies and gentlemen, the sitting city council has had their opportunity, and this hasn't been accomplished. For River is a critical time period, as I stated before, we have to move ahead. No businesses are going to come into the city with the way it is right now. My name is Jeff Gregory. I'd like to thank you for your time, and please get out and vote November 8th. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mike Mioza. I'm a candidate for the Fall River City Council. I would like to thank Fall River Cable TV once again for providing time for the candidates to present their ideas to the people of Fall River. The voters sent a clear message in the preliminary election on September 13th. It's become evident that our city is ready for change and that the people want a city council candidate who understands that education, public safety, developing our waterfront, and the cleanliness of our city are key elements to our city's future success. I would like to thank the voters of Fall River for entrusting me with their vote and allowing me to finish fifth in the election. I look forward to carrying your message for change to the election on November 8th. My aggressive stand against the Hess LNG project over the past nine years has led to this opportunity to serve the city as a city councilor. I intend to apply the same intensity and the same leadership skills to other problems facing the city so I can help move Fall River in a new and positive direction. During this campaign, I have written various position papers outlining my ideas on how to address many issues facing our city. In order to address the cleanliness of our city, I propose creating a street cleaning policy that establishes zones and a policy that creates a schedule with parking restrictions. To create a more business-friendly Fall River and improve economic development, I propose we streamline the permitting process 
for the waterfront, downtown, and industrial park. This initiative will increase the city's tax base and create desperately needed jobs. To address the litter problem plaguing the city, I propose we expand single stream recycling and automate trash pickup citywide. This can save the city upwards to $800,000 per year. In order to address the questions of residency requirements, term limits, ward representation, increasing the mayor's term from, year, from two years to four years, or whether the mayor should chair the school committee or not, I propose we consider creating a charter review commission so the public can have an opportunity to weigh in and approve or deny these proposed changes. In order to crack down on the numerous vacant and problem properties around the city, I have called for the formation of a neighborhood coalition to assist the city in addressing problem properties. This coalition will identify and track the 10 worst properties in the city and follow each property through resolution. This will be an effective way to deal with properties that threaten the health and safety of our citizens. One of the goals of the Fort River City Council should be to take a proactive approach to neighborhood outreach. There is currently no one from the City Council assigned to interact with neighborhood leadership. I propose the creation of at least one liaison from the City Council to each of the neighborhood associations. To get more detail about each of these initiatives, visit the Herald News online or my website at myozaforcitycouncil.com. I believe I will be a good City Councilor for the following reasons. I am a person who has lived in this community most of my adult life. I really care about the people and what goes on in our city. I am willing to get involved in meetings and public events. I am a team player. I recognize I am one council member of nine. I understand I must work with others to build consensus, or at least a majority. I am willing to take on that role. I am someone with an eye towards the future. I understand solving current problems by ignoring what the action will mean 10 years from now is the signature of a bad elected official. I am concerned about the well-being of Fall River and will be focused, will not be focused or concerned on whether I get re-elected. I feel, I feel people who are always worried about the next election sometimes do the wrong thing on big issues. As a city council member, I know I must understand the budget and be able to monitor it carefully. I promise I will do my best to be your new voice on the city council. I will study the issues. I will listen to you. I will ask for your input before making major decisions. I have many ideas to make Fall River a better place to live. To learn more about my ideas for the city, please visit myozaforcitycouncil.com. Once again, your support is critical to my campaign success. I respectfully ask for your vote on November 8th so I can fight to make Fall River a better place to live, work, play, and visit. I appreciate your continued support. I believe if I win, you win. And thank you for taking the time to watch and listen to the candidates. Thank you. Those are the candidates running for mayor, school committee, and city council in the November 8th city election. You can see these candidate statements once again by going to our website at frctv.org. You can see this entire program again under the Election 2011 menu, or you can see the individual candidate statements under their respective races. Also, please join us on Election Night, November 8th, as we'll be collaborating with Fall River Government Television to provide live coverage of the election results that night. That'll do it for Meet the Candidates. I'm Keith Tebow, and please make a point to vote on Tuesday, November 8th.